church. Somebody say confidence. All right, thank you. I promise you, I'll only be a few minutes because we got some work to do here. Some of you need to just tell God, I will never backslide in my mind again. And what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is the spirit of quitting. I'm coming against that spirit that wants to make you quit. That makes you want to put your hand to the plow and then quit because times are too tough and you don't understand what's going on. And you don't know what's happening to you. We all feel that way. You're laughing, but that's, that's, a way, that's, a, that's, an, that's escapism to escape the reality of we all feeling like quitting. That's too much pressure. It's too much ministry pressure. It don't take all that to do ministry. Mm-hmm. It, but it does take all that and more. Because it don't take all that for people to go to hell. You are snatching people away from fire. And you need to practice snatching. We're not good at snatching. Hear me. Hear me, sis. We're not good at snatching until we learn how to snatch each other. What's your practice? What is your soul practice? Most of us mess up with souls. Because we never practiced on each other. Because we got no patience for one another. How can you put your hand in hell? Someone's already halfway there. You're going to put your hand in fire, pull them up, and you're going to be okay with it? And you can't deal with one another who's not in hell? Just in space. We got a bunch of space cadets in church. Just lala. Just walking around aimlessly. And everybody knows this is the whole thing. This is what I hate about the church. That everybody, I don't want to say swear, but they almost do. They know God. And they hear God's voice. Everybody knows God's voice. Everybody heard God say, I heard him say, Pastor. And I have to eat it and wait for the results to come back. You hear me, pastors? I have to wait for people to say, I know God. And I got to wait for the results. And they get bitter in knowing God. And they, and they come like this. Yeah, I know this is hard today. I mean, I have to, and all of a sudden, they know God, Pastor Jules. But then when you look at them, they're not forward no more. I support. You, you, you started out with zeal, but because problems happen, you ended up with an attitude. And the Lord, and I had to deal with this with myself because I'm telling you, we get ready to do revival, and I don't want to deal with nobody. I'm tired. I need to go on vacation. But I can't. I can't. I can't go on vacation until my assignment is fulfilled in God. And he didn't call me. Oh, and if he said to start revival in August, right. If he said to start revival in August, then I must put my feelings aside because obviously he wants to do something. See, you only know this side of me, but you don't know the side that is constantly bombarded by preachers and pastors who are calling me, asking me. Ask my wife. So how can I pull away my hand from something that's moving? You can't. We can't assign someone to what God gave us. I can't say, hey, let me let Andrew do it. Because he didn't raise Andrew from the dead. He raised me from the dead. It's my responsibility. And when I'm, he knows how tired I am and he will relieve me. He will give me a reprieve. When Jesus walked away from people, he never took a disciple. Wonder why. Y'all say he went to go pray. I say he went to go sleep. Okay. I hear you. You're not, you're not, you're not just, you're going to sleep when you pray, but you sleep in prayer. Y'all don't see it. You still don't understand that. You don't. You, you understand. I go to sleep in the presence of God. I can't do that with DJ and Tanya in the bed. 
I got a gut my collar bahushta. I come on stuff up, and it means nothing to you until you stand up and see miracles. But it means everything to me because it's my preparation for hearing. I hear him in my in my subconscious. So that when I get here and see the faces of the people, like, I'm not here for that, Pastor. I can go past that and not be like, look at you. Yeah. Tired of you. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. I know God. Look at you. No. That's our fault. Somebody say our fault. Our fault. Yeah. I want to eat this one, then, huh? You hear me? Go ahead. If you're going to be potent... You ever brought, okay, let's do this. You ever brought some perfume from Macy's and you sprayed it and it's potent and you know, oh, this is the real deal. You only need like two squirts. Then we've all been cheap and, and went to go to the city somewhere to buy what they said was the same thing. And you squirted it seven times. It has the name. It has the bottle. It doesn't have the potency. I, I don't hear nobody. And you got to keep on spraying. The real thing you sprayed twice and it was more than enough for the whole day. This one you got to spray your whole body seven times. And it wears off in about an hour. Because it ain't potent. That's us. We keep squirting people with us. <laughs> you know I love you. You know I do. For you. you know I And there's no anointing. In That's why we got to overgive. Overdo, over say, over. There's no potency in it. When all the, all the disciples had to do, when they, trump, they went from disciples to apostles and they became potent. <laughs> Jesus, Lord, let me leave that alone. When they went from disciples to apostles, the potency changed. And when they, and so they've been walking past all these people all this time with Jesus and nothing happened. Now all of a sudden they're walking past and their shadow was healing people. That's because the same person. Just like fine wine, the per person became more potent with the Holy Ghost. And when they did, when they walked past people, the shadow chased demons. All right, y'all ain't. You got to change your potency by shutting down Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody say, Lord, help us. Help us, all of us. And I hate when people do that. When we be preaching and you feel like it's edged towards somebody, you be like, mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. Stop all that foolish mess in church. I hate that mess. It's all of us. It's me included. God don't send a word to smack one person in the face and make you feel like mm, mm, they hope no. they listen. Mm, mm. No. Devil is a liar. It's for all. Of us. It's for all somebody says it's for all of us. All of us. Me too. For God come down here and strike you down with your nasty heart. The heart is more important than you know. The heart. David was alive and he was a nasty somebody. He likes the women. God said he was a man after my. You know what after means? Huh? Right. Thank you. It wasn't like he was like God. He was chasing God's heart. Even when he offended God, he said, oh, create in me a clean heart and renew, create in me a what? Okay. How is he asking for repentance and there was no Jesus? Y'all. That he's asking for repentance and he's, he's asking and not sacrificing. That's crazy. Did, did you hear what I said? He's asking for repentance and he's not sacrificing sheep. And here we are sacrificing and not asking for repentance. God don't want your money or your blood. He can do without you. All of us. He said, rent your heart, not your garments. Thank you. Amen. That was amen. Well, I'm out here alone, Jesus. Confidence. What is confidence? Do you really believe? This is what, the Lord, this is what I wrote down. Confidence. Do you really believe? If you do, stop quitting. 
The feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. Firm trust. The state of feeling certain about the truth of something. It is not possible to say with confidence how much the increase in sea levels is due to melting glaciers. This is just Webster stuff. Confidence. It is also telling of, a pri of private matters or secrets with mutual trust. A secret told to someone under the condition of trust. Wow. Now, confidence is two ways, which we don't have at all. Confidence is a thing that works in you that you are confident about uh, of who you are and what you have. You have an ability. I'm confident that I can cook. I'm confident that That's I can right. clean. I'm confident that I, I can do this. I got that gift. I've yeah. exercised it more than one time yeah. that I know that I'm good at what I do. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I know who I am. Amen. <laughs> I'm confident that certain people in this building sweat me. <laughs> Just looking at the speakers. Preaching God, <laughs> I'm confident. Glad to be home. Yeah, glad to be home, ain't you? I'm confident. I'm, I have confidence. I have confidence in that when I come here, my church will be here. But there is another type of confidence yes. that we're having a problem with. Amen. Amen. Is trust Amen. in one another. That's right. This is what the Lord taught me how to do it. He said, don't put your, when that scripture says, put your confidence, don't put your confidence in man. But then it tells you to confess your sins to a man. Don't make sense. Y'all not know the scripture. Okay. Do, do y'all get it? This, this is like, this is uh, Deacon Lakeith stuff. This is what he would probably like, right? It tells you, don't put your confidence in man, right? Don't put your confidence in man, but confess your secret faults to one another. Whoa, hold on. That don't, that's oxymoronic. Well, this is how it works. Come here, Pastor, with your beautiful socks. Come on here. Amen. All right. This is Pastor Cannon. I have a relationship with Pastor Cannon. Right? But there's some things that maybe I don't want Pastor Cannon to know about me. Based on who I am. Based on me being his leader. Based on a responsibility that I'm supposed to have to the people. But God says, if I want to be free, I got to do something with Pastor Cannon. I got to give him something that I don't want to give him. How do I do that? Somebody say, how do you do that? How do you do that? I don't trust him at all. Wow. Wow. Mm. I give it to God in him. Oh! I don't give, I don't trust you at all. So I talk to the God part of you. And I give back to your mind. The only way I could trust a man is to trust what's in him. Thank you. That's good. That's good. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. You are making a mistake by trusting each other. Come on. And you don't. And you don't talk to the God part, the spirit part of the man, the Holy Ghost in a person. You don't have that conversation with him. You just go to him naturally. Therefore, failure is inevitable. Y'all not talking back to me. And what the devil does, he knows that, Makahusha, he knows that, that one day, because the devil is a, is a master planner, you forget that. So he makes you be used to failure in people with your family so that you will never ever trust somebody. 
Never. You'll never, ever trust nobody because the closest people, your mama, your daddy, your daddy raped you, your uncle was feeling on you, your auntie was looking at you when you was in the, um, when you was taking showers, felt on little boys. See, little boys got raped too. We don't deal with that. But little boys got molested too by older women who were just nasty and taught some stuff that we shouldn't have known. Nobody going to say amen. Okay? And now you have, you have people lied on you. People did this. People set you up. I've been set up in this church, in this very church, so many times. Oh, he was there, Pastor. How? I was in Philly. All kinds of stuff, right? So now confidence and trust in people is dead. I don't care who you are. I don't trust you. But now I got the Holy Ghost. Now I'm saved for real. My mother ain't here. I ain't got no buffer. Bishop White ain't here. I ain't got no covering. So who do I trust? I got to look in the kiki and see the spirit of God because it's there. And I got to trust what's in you, sweetheart, not you. I don't know you enough to tell you my deep, darkest secrets, but I tell God in you because he knows everything. That's why when people tell you stuff, if you got the Holy Ghost, you're not alarmed. Ooh, God. Because God knows Nothing is a surprise to God. So if they come and say, I just killed three goats and a, and a sheep, and I ate them, and I never cooked them, you wouldn't be like, girl, what? That's the flesh of you responding. But the spirit of you says, come here, let me hug that devil out of you. Come here. You need a hug. You got a spirit of murder on you. Come here, let me get it out. Son of a kote de bohosa. And we don't have that, especially in our culture. We don't have that. Because info becomes ammo. Lord, Lord, y'all don't. Info becomes ammo. And what I know about you will be the dagger that I use to get you. But the devil's a liar in this season. Lord, I need some. I need the whole church to say it. The devil's a liar in this season. We don't need. The only ammo we need is towards Satan. We don't need no ammo towards each other. I'm holding this. I'm holding this in my back pocket so they say something i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this one out that's why larry reed and all them are going to hell i don't care listen to what i'm saying all that stuff you publicize it it's going to be damaging to the body it's damaging people's reputation people that got saved under people that fell and all you're doing is letting it spread the devil is a liar and you're making money off of it and all you prophets that agree with that mess you in trouble with god too watch me i don't care what you say about me I don't need no platform. God is my platform. We can't break the kingdom down and build it up too the same time. And we got the saints watching Larry raid and they should be on their knees praying. The devil is a liar. You ain't saying nothing. You got receipts. Keep your receipts. Your receipts will burn up in hell. Before you use them, you'll be in a car wreck. Your mouth will be crippled. You won't even be able to say nothing. He says, touch not my, he says, touch not my anointed. He didn't say, touch not my perfect. So most need to repent to God. Because we take information and run with it. Child, did you hear? Child, did you hear? Do you know? Do you know? What do we know about you? Put your nasty ways up there and let's see what happened. Don't come here acting all holy and pure. Devil is a liar. Why you still got lingerie in that left drawer if you're holy? You don't need Victoria's Secret. You think I don't see it? I'm looking at it right now. What you burning it for? You don't need them type of bras and all that. For what? Oh, oh, he don't know. Oh, yeah, I do know. I know the color, too. Stop all that. Because it's a plan that if something jump off, I got something. Okay, all right, yeah. Okay. Brother, you don't need if <laughs> you ain't doing that, what's the condoms for? Wow. You can laugh it through, but I'm dead serious. You got condoms and gel and all kinds of stuff for what? For what? For what? For what? For what? But let someone public fall. You go, that's a shame. It's a shame, right? Go in your drawer. Stop playing. What's that thing making buzzing noise and you living holy? Don't get on me. Don't play with me today. Stay in the 
You can la- I got control. You can laugh and do all what you want, but you judge wrong. You say stuff that you shouldn't say, and you got a beam in your eye. How can you see wrong? Tell me you live in holy, you got aid. That's aid. You live in holy. Holy means nothing. <laughs> we all guilty. Holy means nothing. Don't mean you don't have a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. That goes for married too. Don't, don't, don't play. Goes for married too. Now what you do in your room, I'm not getting to that. It's your business. Because everybody's ain't the same. But don't come here judging people, judging singles because they're struggling. You can see it on their face. Struggling. Struggle's real. Struggle. But then I come and I got a wife and I'm going to live right. Did you? Did you? When you was in their position, what did you do? Was the Holy Ghost your outlet? Then tell the people how to hold on until you get free. Lord, I need somebody to say hold on until you get free. You know, we're laughing, but the one thing the devil likes is loneliness. Y'all see, the two biggest portals in the church for spirits to enter into the church to cause us to be crazy is fear and loneliness, not sex. You can control a sexual church, but you cannot control a lonely one and a fearful one. You have no control over that because fear is the gateway to all spirits. All the devil needs to do is see you be fearful. And the Bible says those that were fearful and afraid, Lord. The spirit of fear does not come from God. A lot of you are not married because you're fearful. He's not the one. When the one left. Because the fear of how he looks, how he smells, and all that stuff. You let the devil lie to you. Because every other thing could be altered by love. I will alter how I look by love. But you cannot make a heart and you missed it by a look. He don't look like how I want. You don't either. Stop wanting what you're not. If you ain't no 10, don't ask for a 10. Come on, man. We are messing up the body of Christ by asking for stuff that Satan gave you because of social media and what's on TV. All those people of faith. You believe that woman actually looks like that? She had implants everywhere. And you want, you, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, hourglass. If she had none of that fake stuff, it would be a number nine. It wouldn't be an hourglass. She's a 10 by herself. But you let her go operate. That's what Satan does. He takes people away. He changes them to what they really are not. And he says, this is what you need to become. And you miss God looking at a vision that was given by Lucifer. You look at a ministry that's not even real. I've been to people's churches and I thought they were big by the stage. Because the stage looked right. And when you go there, there's 50 people. Lights, camera, action. There's no Holy Ghost. And we fall for it. We fall for it. We look at preachers with belts. I don't need to come here with a $5,000 outfit on. For what? For what? My ministry is 50 cent. You wear more expensive clothes than the ministry you give. How we have a revival with a look and no power? Oh, look, it's a form of godliness and it has nothing on the inside. It looks like a muscular man, but it has no muscles. It's a silhouette. You fall for it. We look for that and we judge everything by how it looks and we never, ever look at it. That's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. He didn't even give it a chance to grow. 
He didn't give it a chance to grow. Because he said, you've tried to fool me and I created you. You had leaves that looked like fruit should be there. And when I lifted it up to eat, to quench the masters, God tell him a whole side. When I lifted it up to eat from what I created, you had nothing there. Do you know that was a sign of Lucifer being there to trick him? That is the trick of the church. The trick of the church is to be a fig tree with no fruit. To draw people to us and then give them nothing. Because Jesus was drawn to the fig tree. Man, Jesus have mercy. To draw the master, that means he did not use his discernment. He did not use discernment. He didn't discern it. He went by his natural, the natural causes of what looks like fruit should be there. And when he lifted it up, he saw nothing there. So he did not give it a chance to grow. He cursed it. Even if you got fruit coming, you're out of your season. Some of, oh God, I'm trying to warn some of you because you're about to be out of your season. You look powerful, but you got no power. You look loving, but you got no love. You look helpful, but you never help nobody. Here we are, a whole big church movement, still talking about tithing. Are you a fool or what? Really? You haven't prayed for one sick person. And you're talking about, is tithing right? Do me a favor, don't tithe. You feel it? Don't tithe. You hear it from me. Don't tithe. That's what you're listening to. Don't give a tithe and see what happens to you. See what happens. You don't have to tithe. Tithe. You're not going to hell for not tithing. But you do go to hell for a principle that you don't because he said give. Okay, y'all don't want to hear that. There is not one Christian in this world, even if they don't have money, that goes to heaven and can't give. Given is the principle to get in. <laughs> he said, be cheerful. But if you don't give your heart and your will to him, you're not going in. He don't take it from you. That's how you know given is a principle. Because he says, give me you. And I give you access. I hear you. Oh, my soul. Hear you. Okay. Man, I, I don't know what just happened. <sighs> Y'all go to Matthew 11. I can't even give you... Read that for me. Oh, I hate the devil in all his works. I hate him with you. Let's and I, when, I get, when I get to this point, I transform to another person. Some stuff I didn't even study. Start from verse 1. Stand for the reading of the word. Might as well. Hallelujah to God. Matthew 11, verse 1. And it came to pass... Then Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. He departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto him, Go! And show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Blessed is he Whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But that went ye out for to see a prophet, 
Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Now, do me a favor. Go to John, John 1 and 19. John 1 and 19. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then art thou, Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. Then said they unto him, who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make sure right the there. way of the Lord. Confidence, hear me. This is what God gave me this morning. Part of your confidence is being able to declare what you are not. Stop saying that you're certain things and you don't have the fruit for it. You have fruit for administration, but you don't have fruit for prophecy. You, you dream. You hear stuff, but that's not prophecy. Because you don't have love or grace for it. You are not a pastor because you don't like people. Stop saying that you're stuck. John said, I am not this. I'm just a voice. But then Jesus said, he is this. Ow. 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 Yo. Jesus. Ow. If you keep declaring something and he's declaring the opposite, then you have no fruit. Let the Lord quantify and qualify you not you you know why we do that because we gotta back people off from what happened to us when we were younger we bring that stuff to God's house and it's not working oh I'm this I'm this I know God talked to me I know this and this. and then devils follow your voice and challenge you on a level that you're not and then you lose and wonder why because you don't have an apostle's call. So you cannot say, oh, I hear just like that. No, you don't. They hear that. And here they come lurking. Now you go through a series of bad dreams with no answer. Oh, I'm there. I'm there. Go through a series of bad feelings. You can't answer it. You have no answer. So you start making up stuff. I saw a handwriting on the wall. And it said, Akuna Matata. For it shall sell be. It shall be like the lion in the movie. It shall be. And you have no answer because you can say whatever to us, but when you go home, it's torment. Go to Hebrews 10. Mm -hmm. Give it to you one second. I think I want verse Hebrews 10. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me with the word? It's a good word. Y'all want, um, uh, I know that low I come in the volume of the book. If not, it's not what I want. I want where it says confidence. 35. Yeah. Okay, look at 34 first. And can you do it in the Amplified? All and right, you can Hebrews sit down. Chapter 10, starting at verse 34. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. Read it. Do you have it on the screen? For you did sympathize and suffer along with those uh -huh. who were in prison, and you bore therefully the plundering of your belongings and con 
confiscation of your property. In the knowledge. And consciousness. And conclusion. Con consciousness. Yes, Sorry, everybody, my eyes. That you yourselves had a better and mm -hmm. lasting possession. Do not therefore fling. 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 Yeah, I think y'all helped me anyway. Flinging away your fearless confidence. For it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. We're going to bless your eyes because we know you can read. And Jesus, keep We know you can read. We, you already read, but the devil tried to play with his eyes. He's going to, we're going to bind that thing up in the name of Jesus. Do not, therefore, fling. Hold on. Give me my rag or something. Oh, here I go. Don't take what you believe in. It says, don't take your confidence. That means you already have it. Don't take what you possess because you're going through and go like this. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. I ain't tuning up. I ain't doing none of that today. You have taken your confidence, what you've seen in God, what you've experienced in, in latter years, and it was confident that Johnny Washington healed the sick. It's just not confident that you could do it. So you cast away your confidence because you saw A.A. A. Allen do it and you saw this one and you saw people walk and they were healed and people got out of wheelchairs and John is still rolling his in and you have no more confidence and you stop believing and you back away from your gifting. Because a lot of people said to me five years ago, I have the gift to heal and they're not healing no one. They're not even trying. You know why? Because they took what they believed in and tossed it. Y'all not talking to me. Some of you said you were ministers of the gospel. You were this and you that. And I say, where are you preaching at? And you say, you didn't give me a chance. The whole world is available. There's a street calling your name. Why you God call you when we not hearing you? Church is not your opportunity. My first place preaching was not the church. It was a train station. When I wasn't even saying I was called, I had a message. Where's your message and your confidence? Too many people are in the church preaching. That's the problem. Saying everything and anything. Now we read more books than the Bible. Quoting John Maxwell and all that kind of crazy stuff. That's fine. But the word is the most important. Where's your confidence? Where's your confidence? Where's your confidence? You, now, now here we get to self-help. You don't believe in you. Because the Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that means at some point, Christ and you merge together. And if you don't have the confidence that God gave you something, you will rely on a system that fails you every time because the system was not made for you to prosper. The system was made for you to learn and then go. Go ye therefore into, not stay ye therefore. You stay, the book of Acts happens. Did you hear what I just said? We stay the book of Acts happens. That don't mean we don't come back and gather, That's right. but we're trying to all do ministry in one place. This ain't a place for your ministry. Hold on. Can I be honest? This ain't a place for mine either. Um, do you understand what I'm saying? This is where we come, we gather, we get stronger, and boom. Where's Pastor? He's in Florida. Where's pastor? He's in Jersey. Where's pastor? He's over here. Where are you at home? Thinking of ways that people wronged you. Thinking of ways of how the system failed you. Thinking of ways how you can make more money. Thinking of ways of how you're going to tell that guy you don't really like him. Thinking of ways you find out Dayton that she, is she the right one? Thinking of all that stuff. I, I'm right here. Am I going to get married? You second guessing for how long? Y'all, why are y'all sitting? 
Y'all can sit in this corner. Don't be lazy. Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> Old Testament, they stood up for the whole reading. Yeah. Hours. Hours. The mothers were standing with the children, breastfeeding the children. That's the one thing I'm going to break in this church, laziness. When we say clap, you're going to clap. Unity. So while I was saying that, thank you, Lord. I was saying that. I'm going to do a little bit of that, and I may even look at my notes later. Oh, I was watching a confession of a witch, and she said, and she saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. She, she loved God. She said, she said, Satan breaks the church because of unification. She said, now, you, witches usually go after each other. There is no unity. There is no love loss in destroying another witch. Matter of fact, they want to destroy. If you destroy another witch, you take her powers and her place. You take her rank. So they render you like, like the demons. They cast spells on you, and you can't do no more spells and all that kind of stuff. And she's saying this stuff. She said, the church has learned that's why witches get in a circle, hold hands, and begin to pray in tongues. I said, what? Demonic tongues. She said, because the, the dark world understands unity. It's the church that wants to go separate and pray on their own. That's what she said. She said, we get the church, instead of coming together to pray, we want to pray in a corner by ourselves. And the spirit realm understands unity. So witches that don't even like each other will chant with one another for hours, holding hands. But it's the church. Especially, y'all don't want to hear this. But if I'm learning it, I'm going to break it. Am I wrong for this? Am I, if I learn it, if you hear it from someone who was on the other side and they're telling you clues. Y'all watch John Ramirez. He says the same thing. Our biggest problem. You know why revival is at a, it's already on earth, but it won't hit our doorstep because we're not unified enough. We all have our methodology of how God should come in. <laughs> he should come in this way. We judge everything. And you know how we judge everything? We judge everything by what we read or saw before. Not believing that God could be brand new. <laughs> That's why I told you, revival's coming through the homosexual community. You better believe me. It's coming through the transgenders. All oh, y'all want to <laughs> sit there and think like it's not? It's coming through sexual dysfunction. Watch. While you be judging and saying that's not God, tons of people are going to be saved and changed. And they're going to be living right too, better than us. You know why? Because when they get it, they get it for real. And they know how to have unity. We don't. Ain't that a shame that the rainbow has more unity than the real rainbow? They can march and have nobody fighting in pride. Nobody. They flattening Black Matters, though. Black Lives Matter. We smacking each other. You hit me with your poster. Y'all don't want the truth. It's a serious matter. Pride is marching down the street everywhere, in every state. Unified. Making money, bringing money to the state. You got pride. Listen, you got, when you go to Macy's, you know it's Pride Month because everything is rainbow. Black Light, it be Black History Month and it be the same stuff. <laughs> they don't even give us a black mannequin. <laughs> and we suffered. We were slaves for 400 years, 400 and something years. We working. Making people's rich. <laughs> we don't get a t-shirt from no company. You don't see Gucci putting on no black. Why Gucci ain't got no black life matter? Why Chanel? And we supporting them. And this is the mentality of the spirit realm. And we watch angry preachers. God. We watch angry preachers spew anger about the Bible. And we think it's okay. And Jesus was love. And Jesus allowed them to do what they did. <laughs> Here we are in 2022. I don't, this is the whole thing. I want you all to hear me. It's getting to the point where I don't care what you say. I care what you perform. 
Don't tell me you're preaching Jesus and you don't perform not one thing in his name. Because it says in his name you will. Period. Point blank. You can be educated. You can know every Bible verse. But the Bible says that the spirit, the spirit, the, the word. What's that scripture again? No. Uh-uh. No, no. It, the, the, uh, the, it's, it's, let me paraphrase. That the word without the spirit is trouble. If you are quoting scriptures and you don't have the letter kill it, but the spirit make it alive. The letter, that's in the Bible, y'all. The letter killeth. The letter by itself will kill you, but the spirit make it alive. You need both. The spirit interprets the letter. And each interpretation is different because what God says is sin to you is not sin to my wife. What God says is sin to Andrew is not sin to me. It's not sin to Pastor Cannon. But, but, but we don't have the same story. We don't come from the same dysfunction. You got a dysfunction that we got to watch in the spirit. But I can't watch it unless it's revealed. So if I preach something to you and say, you live by that, I'm wrong. Because I don't know. Right? In layman terms. Why am I preaching to you about drinking and you never drank in your life? And I keep telling you about alcohol, but you had a problem with snorting coke. And I keep telling you about alcohol. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, has nothing to do with you. It doesn't affect you at all because you're not an alcoholic. And we keep preaching a gospel that's not affecting no one. That's why God wiped out our leaders. Do you actually, I want you to hear this and I'm going to stop. I messed up my message. But do you really think that Satan could come take five million people and God don't say nothing? Just think about it. And all those people, and all those people, there was no real believers. And the devil just had enough power to cause COVID to take all our leaders out. Do you really think that? Somewhere he had permission from the most high. And permit it a little bit. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's just leave the devil out of it. Let's, God allowed death to come and to do more damage than we have seen in our lifetime. And we couldn't do nothing about it. You think people weren't praying? People were sincerely on their knees praying and fasting. And some of us like me made it out, but a lot of us didn't. So that means it was the will for me to live. It was the will. And it was the will for you not to catch it or you to have a piece of it and live. Whatever the will was, what are you doing with it? Don't tell. Hmm, hmm. Ain't this soul searching? Whatever the will of God was for you, it was to keep you alive, not to be what we're doing now. There's no way you could tell me this is the will of God for us as a whole. You hear what I'm saying as a whole. When we preach, we preach to the whole body, okay? And some of us is working, doing the will of God. That's... I hope that's the Lord. If my mother was alive, that would be 50 bucks from everybody in the booth. But I know it's okay, guys. <laughs> I'm I'm finished, really. I think I'm finished. I never oh I never really got to John the Baptist synopsis synopsis. Okay, John the Baptist. John the Baptist. This is you. Put you in it. John the Baptist says, "Prepare the way of the Lord." He comes. He comes. He says, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Then he comes. The Lord comes. Hear me, everybody. The Lord comes. John goes, this is the one. I'm not even worthy to latch his shoes. He's the one that's going to baptize you with fire. He, he's a, allowed to. 
John is the only one that was allowed to put his hand on Jesus and anoint my God. To baptize him, he had to take his hand and put his hand on God. Y'all see? Whoa. Can you imagine what came over John to take? I, listen, I was in a pool. Oh, my Oh, my Oh. Oh, mm. he cut the I was in the machine of the the other. A middle of the hush, uh huh. Less a who rabato shahala danza la don. Yeah, ta 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 and we begin to anoint people, you could feel the presence of God in the water. But that was just a bashorable. But that was just the presence. It wasn't him. Can you imagine him? And he takes his human hand and Jesus submits to John and he dunks him in the water. And he comes back up. John has that experience with the master. Prophesies the master. But then goes to jail and says, are you? Do you understand? I want everybody to hear me. How confidence can leave you when you're jailed. It takes because you are going to get to bondage. Every last one of us. You will be in some type of bondage. And that bondage will make you question your experience. Okay. I still, amen's died down. You will question the very existence of what happened to you. Because now you're jailed. John is in jail because Herod is mad. Because John spoke out about Herod and his, and his relationship with his sister-in-law. And now his head is about to roll and he knows it. He's not asking for his life. He's asking, are you the one? After he just, because confidence left him. And he believed in him when he was there. But when he was not in the water with him and he was in prison by himself, he started questioning, are you the one? What are you questioning right now? Because he ain't with you. Don't feel him. The goosebumps is gone. Now you got to look people in the face. You're not looking people in the face. See, when we walk around in the spirit, I want everybody to hear me. When we walk around in the spirit, it's good to hug. It's good to kiss. It's good. It's just when it's all over. And everybody has a fleeing moment. Flee the scene because church is over. We don't have to bond. We don't have to talk. Let me just get out of here. And unity is not created by you speaking in tongue. I don't care what church you go to. The problem is, is after the glory. Jesus is on assignment. Man, Jesus. He's on assignment. And John's Disciples become Jesus' disciples because the greater came. There's no reason to have two heads, so one got a roll. Yo, 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 it, man, am I talking foreign or something? One got a roll, and so there's always going to be a sacrifice when. Oh, let me leave that alone. Okay, so now John is not asking for his life. He's asking, "Are you the one? Do I?" Give my confidence to you right now, or do I still seek to live? Because that's going to change my prayer. Man, Jesus. If you're not the one, let me know so I can change my prayer system. Now I'm going to pray in, in jail to get me out. Not me stay here. A lot of y'all are praying the wrong prayer in your bondage. Lord, Oh, God, I know this is God that gave it to me. You are praying the wrong prayer in bondage. Mm -hmm. 
You are praying the wrong prayer while God got you in holding. Your ministry ain't going nowhere. Your life ain't going nowhere. You ain't happy nowhere. So now you praying the wrong prayer. You binding the wrong spirit. It's not a spirit. It's a cell. Yeah. It's a, it's a cell. It's a jail cell. Take Paul's advice. While you're in prison, write. While you are in prison, minister. You just waiting for something to happen. Oh God, are you the one? Am I the one? You're not asking. <laughs> am I the one, Lord? Oh God, am I the one? Oh Lord, is it me? Oh Lord, am I supposed to be the one to bring? Lord, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed? Am I the one supposed to start the conversation and get it? What am I supposed? Oh God, <laughs> devil, I bind you. I know it's a demon. I bind you. Oh demons, you bind you. <laughs> and you are in a cell, and ain't no demon allowed. Neither is the Holy Ghost. Because you are supposed to be in bondage with truth. Whew, man, I am a... You are bonded to truth. And you discover the truth about you when you are in a cell by yourself. You're not influenced by nothing but truth. And it's the truth about you, not about others. Because once I learn me, I can affect you. I can change how you think once I know me. Once I know my gifting in God, and that comes from truth, I don't care. I don't care what you think or feel about me. It's getting ready to change. How do I know this? Because Paul comes out of the de Jesus comes out of the devil more confident, and so does Paul comes out more confident because he has to have... Can you believe? He got to believe in himself because he was a killer. He sent people to be eaten by lions. He held coats while they was getting stoned. Now, how do you have confidence that God's people are going to accept you? How? Who? Not a man, not Peter, none of the disciples, none of the apostles had anything to do with his confidence. None. Just the Holy Ghost. Where's yours? Ah. <sighs> Think my job is done today. Now, please, don't everybody agree and don't change. Don't, don't agree with me and don't change. Don't say yes, pastor, yes, pastor, yes, pastor, and the same person comes back next Sunday. At least make an effort to shift you. Talk to everybody. Tell yourself, make an effort. 